39 years ago, Sir John Compton raised his arms and proudly waved our independence declaration, signaling St. Lucia's entry onto the world stage as an independent nation. Through the years since then, we have slowly adjusted to what this independence actually means. And as we celebrate our 39th anniversary, it's important to examine how far we have come, where we are, and where we need to go. We must ask ourselves whether we have attained our own vision of independence. It is true that we seize the right to determine our own destiny, but until we can stand on our own, can we say that we are truly independent? Today we remain constrained by the shackles of poverty, unemployment, inadequate and inaccessible health care, a stagnant education system, and an overdependence on foreign support. We now have to grapple with the challenges of global warming, largely caused by the first world nations, which continues to be of grave concern to us as we lack the economic and political might to affect changes to policy in those countries. Yet we suffer the effects of their policies. The catastrophic effect of last year's hurricane season on our small island neighbors, which are still reeling both socially and economically, are example enough. Whilst we cannot dictate policy to those countries, we can take steps to ensure that we build a more resilient infrastructure so that we are better equipped to deal with the effects of climate change. As the world changes, so must we. We must learn to be confident in our ability as a nation and as a people to chart a meaningful and sustainable way forward for future generations. Critical issues face my government, but we are determined to tackle them head on. Since being elected into office, we've seen the rate of unemployment drop, but it's still far too high. One unemployed solution, genuinely looking for work, is one person too many. Crime continues to increase, in particular gang-related and domestic violence. While we are aware that there are many root causes, people cannot continue to feel excluded, powerless or hopeless. We must therefore ensure that the new St. Lucia, which we are pledged to build, fast becomes a reality of which everyone is a part. This is and has always been my government's pledge to improve the lives of everyday St. Lucians and to give everyone the opportunity to succeed. A truly mature society comprises responsible citizens who accept that each has a role to play in the development of the nation. And I urge all solutions to step up and step forward. In days gone by, communities and families were deeply intertwined. We participated more in raising our children and supported each other. Our country is long overdue for a return to the thinking that it takes a village to raise a child. Nowadays, people are reluctant to get involved with other people's problems, and errant children are all too often morphed into juvenile delinquents and even worse. I urge you all, volunteer some of your time and energies to make a contribution to your community, to your country. No contribution is too small. We must nurture and guide the children of today and instill in them the right values, which are critical to a properly functioning and equitable society. Discipline, hard work, faith in God, and sound family values are the foundation on which we have built and must continue to build our nation. 
Therefore, as a government, we encourage religious knowledge in our schools and prayer in our communities. Fellow solutions, we've had no shortage of national heroes who embody our greatness and our ability to excel. Dame Sassan Discard, Teresa Hall, Sir Derek Walcott, Sir Dunstan St. Omer, Sir Arthur Lewis, just to name a few. We continue to be a free and stable democracy, and we have much to be proud of in that regard. But my government wants your participation to forge a path to real independence, where we can stand on our own two feet and achieve greatness. We did not look too far to see that this is possible. Despite insufficient resources and limited support, some of our national athletes stand shoulder to shoulder on the global stage with the best in the world. Laverne Spencer, Kimani Melius, Darren Sammy, Johnson Charles, Julian Alfred, Albert Reynolds, our young cricketers and boxers. They all continue to make us proud. In the music arena, despite challenges, Tedison John, Ricky T, the Denry segment, rising stars like Migos and Mata, Mighty and Sub Ants, and Moto have been taking our local sound across the borders. And there are many others hot on their heels. The new plans unveiled at the National Sports Awards a few days ago show this government's commitment to the development of the youth. We will create world-class facilities to encourage our youth to pursue their dreams and to show them that we take their goals seriously. We support them, not only in our words, but more importantly, in our deeds. The evidence is clear that the youngsters who are engaged early in life are unlikely to be tempted by the lure of gangs, and it is our responsibility as a government and as a nation to create organized, wide-ranging community-based activities for our youth. This year, we're committed to launching our after-school coaching and learning programs, as well as our specialized schools with a dedication to athletics and the arts. On assuming office, we knew there would be some hard choices ahead. I want to reassure all solutions today that we are not afraid to make them. There were no mixed messages in the election results. You wanted change. You wanted an equal chance at prosperity for everyone. And we remain resolute in our commitment to create real opportunities for all St. Lucians. The south of the island has been neglected for far too long. Too many have had to move to the north. Too many families have been torn apart in search of opportunity, whilst others have given up entirely. Let me say to you, the people in the South, your time has come. The Desert Start Holding Project, the new cruise ship terminal, the new airport terminal, the new Fairmont Hotel in Choiseul, the new resort development at Honeymoon Beach, will create jobs and opportunity the likes of which have never been seen before. There will be exciting opportunities for restaurateurs, taxi drivers, souvenir and merchandise shop owners, farmers and fisherfolk, port workers, equine workers, tour operators, and the list goes on and on. The horse racing track, a part of the DSH, will attract enormous interest from equine enthusiasts from all over the world and St. Lucia will benefit greatly from the increased intention. We cannot continue to ignore the problems plaguing the South, particularly its youth. And these projects will immediately provide them with opportunities for gainful and more importantly, sustained employment. They have too much unfulfilled potential and deserve to have some hope and opportunity relies their own dreams. For they too dream of being truly independent. 
I am confident that the development of the South will give them that opportunity to chart their own destiny. Why should the South not have its own Rodney Bay, its own port, its own bustling town? An airport we can all be proud of. If Sir John had listened to his detractors, we would have no Pigeon Island Causeway, no Rose Dam, no Millennium Highway, no Rodney Bay Marina, and many other projects. Naysayers are so called because they never believe, and consequently, they never achieve. But as I have often stated, change does not usually come easily or without resistance. Left to the opposition, we would still be a colony. I imagine, they even opposed independence. Our independence. As your Prime Minister, I'm prepared to lead in making the necessary changes for the benefit of all St. Lucians. Wherever they may roam, our government has taken steps to create a more viable agricultural industry, to reduce our dependence on foreign suppliers. Creating and maintaining an adequate food supply for our citizens is also a major factor in our strategic development plan. Food security will not only make us more resilient, but also provide much needed support to our local farmers, fisher folk, producers, allowing for more of our financial resources to remain at home and contribute to our local economy. As previously stated, the youth are a major focus of this administration and at the forefront of every strategy. We owe it to them to provide a dynamic and progressive education system, which is relevant and up to the times. We must keep our people engaged and equip our workforce with the requisite skills and direction to compete, not only locally, regionally, but also globally. The global marketplace demands a more savvy and technologically familiar workforce to fulfill the job market requirements. And our education system must, it must adapt and encourage creative thinking. Feedback from the recently opened Ojo Labs in Viewfort on the first round of hires is tremendously encouraging and confirms that our young people are more than up to the task when given the opportunity. One of their new employees, Monty Francis, who is only a high school graduate, took the initiative, his own initiative, to write a script doubling the efficiency of an AI program done by PhDs. This artificial intelligence center is the first in the Caribbean region and is training our people in new technologies and equipping them with skills they can use anywhere in the world, making them globally competitive citizens. This is the kind of innovation thinking we want for our people. With projects such as Ojo Labs and the several hotel projects we have coming on stream, we anticipate a continuous decline in unemployment. We have seen phenomenal improvement in tourism arrivals. Stayover figures increased by 10.5% and cruise ship arrivals by 16%. Port Castries has welcomed our first quantum class vessel, thanks to our newly extended berth at Point Seraphim. The increase in VAT rate has also meant, sorry, the decrease in the VAT rate has also meant more spending power in the hands of St. Lucians, which has contributed to an increase in the sales and a general increase in the optimism in the business sector. Belle saint lucie at 39 years of age, I am seeing signs of hope and change. 
I take this opportunity to call St. Lucians who reside beyond our shores to become more involved. St. Lucia needs you. And to those who can return home and get involved in the development of your nation, you must. You are part of us and we are part of you. We welcome the skills, education and experience you've received abroad and we would value your contribution. To all solutions, I pledge you that my government will not rest until we deliver upon the promises we made. I didn't seek office to maintain the status quo or simply boast many years from now that I was once the position of Prime Minister. We all ran for office because we believed and still believe in the potential of our country. And we will only rest when we deliver on the mandate that you gave our government. For we believe it is only through the execution of our vision and plans, which underpin this mandate, that our fair Helen can achieve its full potential and can achieve economic prosperity and social justice, and ultimately can achieve true independence for all to all solutions at home and abroad. Happy 39th anniversary. May God bless you all and may God bless St. Lucia.